Hey, what's up everybody? This is Steve from Linux, by the way, and it looks like 2026 is shaping up to be a great year for Linux and Desktop, mostly due to the gaming community. So during the last year, Valve has put a ton of effort into Linux and making Proton excellent, and now Linux runs games usually even better than Windows, and we're starting to see this leak out into all sorts of non-Linux circles, where mainstream gamers are kind of upset at the way Windows has been mistreated and ignored, and there's sort of all these AI features going in that people aren't a fan of. We see Microsoft actually addressing it head on, where they're saying they won't make AI slop, etc. But we know that every time you do an update, you have to click all the toggles and you have to tell them, hey, I don't want to give you all my information. And every update brings new and unwanted features where everything is really a web view than an actual app and all sorts of problems. And this is where Linux is really taking the time to shine because a lot of users do want the freedom and control. It's not just about money. It's about like, can I control my system? And are you going to push down an update which just ruins everything for me because I just want to play games? And we see PC Gamer come out with this banger, which is, I'm brave enough to say it, Linux is good now. If you want to feel like you actually own your PC, make 2026 the year of Linux on your desktop. And that's awesome and it's true. So there's a lot of ways to run Linux. If you're new to the channel or new to Linux and you just kind of came across this video, uh, I'm running Omarkey, but for new users, a lot of users use Bazite now. And Bazite is just a click, install, and you can't screw it up really because you can always just roll back. So it's got this very sophisticated update system. And so you can check that out if you're interested. And so if we check out the article by Joshua Wollens, he says, I'm all in, baby. I'm committed. If upgrading any distinct component of my PC didn't require me to take a loan out right now, I'd be seriously considering switching my GPU over to some kind of AMD thing just to make my life slightly, slightly easier. And that's because Linux works great with AMD GPUs. So AMD made a big effort to open source their drivers and it can run all sorts of games. And as you see, it's also in a lot of different devices. So if you take the Steam Deck, that's actually an AMD GPU, et cetera. And so it works great and I would highly recommend it. I've also used NVIDIA. I really don't have problems there. They do make good drivers and it works well for video editing and things like that. Uh, and you can check that out. I have a couple of videos on that. And it's worth pointing out as we enter 2026, Linux usage on Steam has hit an all time high. So we're at 3.2% of overall users, but that's grown fairly rapidly. And that's a non-trivial number, right? That's still like a million users plus. And so tons of people out there are running it. But also, this is what Valve uses for the Steam Deck. So Valve uses their Arch distro, and they're able to make all these games run on very low-end hardware. So if you build a full desktop, everything is going to run awesomely. And I see that all the time now. When I open a game and I run Proton, it like just works, and everything looks good. And I don't really have to fiddle with config files or anything. And that's what a lot of users are experiencing. And we're just seeing a flood of these articles as sort of 2026 kicks off. So. Uh, there's another one that's on XDA developers, and I put the articles below if you want to check them out. Uh, it says, I deleted Windows from my PC after using Linux for five months. Now, I know what you're all thinking is like, yeah, we've heard this before, and we've heard it every year, etc. We've really reached a tipping point where Microsoft has taken its eyes off the ball in terms of it doesn't really focus on Windows and iterate and make that a consumer-centric thing anymore. They have these big business clients, and then they have these other markets like the cloud computing and AI, and that's where their attention is going. It's just not going to people who are casual gamers. And you also see that with the Xbox really hurting lately and not really uh, being focused and delivering what gamers want. And so that's why this is a perfect opportunity is because, yeah, is Linux easy to use all the time? Well, in the gaming scenario, yes, because you just insert a USB key, you click a couple buttons to install, and then you log into Steam. And like Steam is basically your main interface. But there's a million other things you could do on Linux if you wanted to. And people are starting to see that now, but especially for the gamers, because their use case is solved and everybody's just sort of picking that up. And so the article here says, a little while ago, I posted an article about moving from Windows to Linux and how they didn't really miss Windows. And at the end, I mused that I may never actually delete my Windows partition because I might need it. Well, fast forward a week and a half, I found Windows is now gone from my system. Yeah, that didn't last long. And so that's the kind of thing that I'm seeing all over the place. And it's not just these few articles that are on these very mainstream publications now. It's starting to be like dominoes falling, and we're really picking up the speed there. I also caught this tweet from Hightail. So they're looking at targeting Linux support. And I've seen other very Linux-friendly developers uh, on all sorts of new games coming out. And it makes sense, right? Because you need these games to work really well in the Steam Box and the Steam Deck. And also, there is a non-trivial amount of users on Linux now. 
And so that's really great to see. And then some users are actually using Linux for performance gains. Now, I think a lot of people out there would use Linux, even if it was 10% slower or 15% slower, just because they don't have to deal with Microsoft or like pushing down Candy Crunch or whatever sort of uh, screenshotting AI features they want to throw your way when you can just run it all on Linux and not have to worry about any of that or have like the OneDrive box pop up over and over and over again, and like you silence notifications, and we've all done that, right? No fun. But uh, there's also a lot of great benchmarks out now showing this one's Cache OS versus Windows 11, but there's a real performance increase in a lot of these games too. So you're not losing performance, sometimes you're gaining it. And so if you're interested in any of this, I'm a developer, and so I'm running Omarky at the moment, which is like this crazy tiling Windows manager, and you can see me swap between things and all that, and I have a video on that. But if you're somebody who's more normal and not a programmer or anything, uh, you can check out Bazite and you can just install that and run Steam. And you can even do it uh, with Windows still installed so you can make a little space in your Windows partition for it. And you can just try it out, right? Put the USB key in, give it a shot, check if your games run before you see like, can you move over? And basically 90% of the gaming population on Windows, they're doing things like they're running games, maybe they're running OBS and they have a web browser and their voice chatting or something. And that is a solved problem. We have Chrome, we have Brave, we have all those things. We have all the games. Um, like my mic just works with Linux. I don't have to do anything funny. I'm making this video on Linux. I have OBS running, capturing my screen. And so all of that in terms of like, oh, I heard that didn't work with Linux, or I tried it 15 years ago, it didn't work out. Well, it works now. And so let me know what you think. Are you switching over to Linux? Are there big games that won't run? I do know there's some anti-cheats, right? So like, if you wanna play some of the bigger games and they have the easy anti-cheat, it doesn't always work on Linux. In my case, I'm playing single player games or multiplayer games without easy anti-cheat. And I should probably talk about that in a future video too, because what you're talking about is you're giving these game developers access to like your whole system, right? So when you have Warden or Easy Anti-Cheat or whatever, it's running on a kernel level. So that means like if you have a pictures folder or a password vault or anything else, well, it can like read what's in your memory, okay? So uh, if you're trusting these game developers to have root access to your system, you know, cool, I guess that's like your thing, right? I don't think that I trust them very much, especially just because like, everything from the hiring practices. Game developers are not the most secure companies. They're not the most compliant companies. They don't have the longevity. So even if like you started a game company that was excellent, well, maybe five years down the road, you've lost some people, there's been some reorgs, you know, people don't remember how secure you're supposed to be, whatever the case may be. With things like Bazite, you can run these in a container. So you can say, oh, I'm gonna run Steam over here. And by the way, it can't access my web browser. And so that's actually really cool. And so. I'm definitely not a fan of these anti-cheats and you should think about it because they might be doing more than you think or certainly like if they got hacked, that would be a huge problem for everybody and you might not know it. And so anyways, let me know in the comments below, are you running Linux for all your games? Have you swapped over? Are there things still holding you back or are there weird incompatible hardware? Uh, in my case, I always recommend like System76, for example, they make pre-built Linux machines and they just install Linux on there and they have their own distro called Cosmic Desktop, which is written in Rust which is really cool. And with that, I also just posted a very beginner Rust tutorial where we try to make a game in Rust using an awesome blog post. So if you're interested in that, check it out. But otherwise, I'll see you in the next one. Later.